Hi and welcome back. This is Dr. Barry. Today I want to talk to you about how many meals a day you should eat. How many meals a day is healthy? Uh, should you eat six meals a day? Now this is very important and it's going to help you improve your health. First I need you to take a moment and click the subscribe button and hit the little bell and maybe even share this on social media because so many millions of people have obesity, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistant and they need to hear this information. So help me spread the word, would you? Okay, six meals a day. If you go talk to any dietitian, any nutritionist, any doctor, any endocrinologist, they're going to tell you you need to eat six times a day, okay? Or three, meal, three meals a day and three snacks in between. So this, this, this advice has to be based on just volumes and volumes of medical research, right? Because all these experts, they wouldn't be recommending this if it were based on no research, right? Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but after looking into this, there's absolutely no research that supports this. None. Zero. Nothing. There's literally nothing. I'm not joking. You can either Google it or look on PubMed.gov and try to find any kind of meaningful research that shows that human beings should eat six times a day. A lot of them will say, oh, well, look at cattle. Look at cows. They graze all day long, and yet they're almost all muscle. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're ruminants. They have a completely different stomach and a different DNA than us. So, no, this, that doesn't apply, okay? Now, I have, to, I have a confession to make, and I feel terrible about this. And then I also want to tell you that at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what I think is the best way you should eat to lose weight, optimize your health, and optimize your longevity. Okay? So don't let me forget that. So six meals a day, my confession is, is that for several years in, in the beginning of my medical practice, I used to give that advice to patients every day, especially diabetics who need that advice the very least of all. And I want to take this moment moment to apologize literally from the bottom of my heart and soul for giving that stupid advice to all those patients. I probably caused heart attacks and strokes in those patients with that stupid, ignorant, ignorant, unlearned advice that I used to give in the beginning of my medical practice. And I want to try to make it up now with this video and videos that I make in the future. And I want to try to spread this to every diabetic, every person who's struggling with obesity and being overweight. No, six meals a day, that's stupid advice. Please don't eat like that, okay? So again, let me repeat, this advice that's given in the, the biggest medical uh, facilities in the world by the most preeminent endocrinologists and nutritionists is based on no medical research at all. There is no research that shows that human beings should eat three meals a day with snacks or six times a day. It just doesn't exist, I'm sorry, okay? So where did it come from? Well, it came from something called expert advice, expert opinion, or expert consensus. You see, in medicine, we try to base everything we recommend to patients on research, but that often doesn't happen. The very best research study type of all is the placebo-controlled, double-blind medical study, where you enroll a bunch of people, the doctor, the patient, no one knows what they're getting, and then at the end of the study, you unveil, oh, they were taking pill A or pill B, and this is, this is the results. If you don't do it that way, human nature will creep in every time and give you false results. And so we come on down in all the different types of research studies and the power that they give us to make recommendations to patients. The least powerful of all, down here, right here, is called expert consensus. And what that means is, and anytime you see that in a, in a USA Today article or a New York Times article, that means there's no damn research to back that up at all, okay? It means they ask the expert at the Mayo Clinic and at UCLA and at uh, Yale or Harvard, wherever, they got all those guys together and said, hey, we need you to come up with a, uh, an expert opinion statement and tell us what you think based on all your years of being an expert. So, you would think that these guys would really think about this and try to do what's best for patients, and I guess that's what they're trying to do, but what usually comes out is, a, is an opinion that really benefits big medicine, big pharma, big food, uh, and big farming. That's usually what comes out of that. I'm not sure why that coincidence keeps happening over and over when you ask experts for their opinion. I don't know, but it keeps happening, okay? And so... If you don't believe me, Google it and look it up on PubMed.gov. Look it up. See if you can find a big, meaningful research study that shows that six meals a day are better than three or two or one or whatever because you're not going to find it, okay? So 
Like I said, I'm guilty of giving this advice early in my career before I knew better, but now that I know better, I'm trying to spread the word that that's not the way you need to eat at all, okay? Here's what happens. What you're trying not to do is you're trying not to elevate your blood glucose too much. You're trying to never elevate your blood insulin levels too much because the last thing you want to do is store fat in your muscles or fat in your liver or worst of all, fat in your pancreas. You don't want to do that ever because it leads to chronic overweight, obesity, and disease. Okay, so you don't want to do that. So every time you eat carbs, you elevate your blood sugar, which elevates your insulin level. Okay, we know that. If you eat a lot of protein, it also elevates your insulin, your blood insulin level, which is just as bad. Okay, and so the, a high carb, whole wheat, whole, whole grain diet is terrible for your long-term health. Also a high protein, low fat diet is not great for your health at all. You don't need to eat either one of those because both of those, if you don't eat every two hours or every three hours, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna be starving, you're gonna be hangry because those kinds of foods just don't satisfy you for long, right? It's the same concept as when you go to the Chinese restaurant and you eat all the noodles and rice and you're just so full you can hardly move and then two hours later, that's right, you're hungry. You're hungry again because all the carbs are gone. You've already stored all that crap as fat in your muscles and your liver and your pancreas and you're ready to eat again, okay? When you start eating a higher fat diet, first of all, you can eat six times a day because you're just not hungry, okay? And so also you don't raise your blood sugar and you don't raise your blood insulin levels so you don't get all the disastrous consequences of those two things being high. Okay, so that's where it came from, is expert opinion. There's no research to prove that whatsoever. So, okay, Dr. Barry, you seem like you know it all. How should I eat then? Well, let's talk about, let's go back to 1940. Let's travel back in time. Those folks back then, they ate three meals a day, every day, right? And they never snacked. You just didn't snack back then or you'd get your hand whacked with the soup spoon. That's where the, the term you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar that's where that came from because back then you had breakfast about 8 a.m., 7, 8, 9, somewhere in there, and then you had lunch about noon, and then you had dinner or supper, depending on what part of the country you're from. You had that about 5, 6, 7 p.m., and then that's it. You were done. You didn't eat again until breakfast the next morning. There was no snacking. Snack, snacking was forbidden because back then moms knew, grandmothers knew that that would make you fat, and so they didn't want you to be fat, so they wouldn't let you snack. And so if you got caught trying to snack in between meals or after supper dinner, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar and you got whacked with the spoon, okay? Now, <clears throat> back in those days, if you were a bad kid, a bad little boy or a bad little girl, then you got sent to bed without supper. That's right, yeah. And so even though that seemed like a terrible torture and punishment back then, I wouldn't like it either, but it was actually a very healthy advice to give to those kids because none of them were overweight and that's why they either ate two meals a day if they were bad boys and girls or three meals a day if they were good boys or girl but they had a very constricted feeding window so that their insulin level and their blood sugar level stayed low all through the evening and night and into the next morning and so there was just no opportunity for them to store fat in their muscles or worse fat in their liver or worst of all fat in the pancreas so they back in the 40s hear me they ate almost as much junk as we do now, but there was the, the there was no such thing as type 2 diabetes in children back then. It didn't exist, and it was very, very rare for an adult to have type 2 diabetes back in the 40s because of the way they ate. Also, there was no there was no obesity epidemic. <clears throat> there was no epidemic of insulin resistance back then. There was no heart attack and stroke ep epidemic because they had a very narrow feeding window and they were fasting for most of the day. Does that make sense? And so that's my tip to you today is you need to, to eat for eight hours a day and you need to fast for 16 hours a day. And that means no six meals a day. Don't do that, okay? Now, if you enjoyed this video, I want you to click the subscribe button and hit the little bell. Or better yet, share this with someone on social media who needs to hear this message because there are millions of people at risk for heart attack and stroke right now who need to hear this. And if you don't share it, they may not hear it. So share this video and tune in next time because there's no telling what bright idea I'll have.